Hello, my name is Dr. Joe Gallus. I'm an orthopedic foot and ankle surgeon at Iowa Ortho. Uh, our main office is in downtown Des Moines, Iowa, but we have satellite offices throughout central Iowa. Among the offices that I go to would be Pella, I go to Ankeny, and I do have an office in uh, uh, West Des Moines and Clive area. My primary focus is orthopedic foot and ankle uh, pathology. So I'll see a, a number of pathologies, including ankle and foot arthritis, uh, acute or chronic ankle injuries, which may include ankle sprains, which sometimes leads to ankle instability. Um, I'll see people with torn Achilles tendons, the tendons on the outside of the ankle, peroneal tendons are among the more common things that I do see. Uh, I tend to focus more on adult population, uh, but I will see kids as young as uh, seven or eight. Uh, we do have a pediatric orthopedic surgeon who tends to see younger children with foot and ankle issues. Uh, I see a lot of overuse injuries, people who are athletes who uh, do a lot of wear and tear on their lower extremities, which sometimes do lead to chronic uh, issues. Sometimes I see stress fractures as a result of overuse injuries. Uh, my primary focus uh, has kind of evolved into adult foot and ankle arthritis. I'm um, doing a lot of ankle replacements and ankle fusions and other fusions about the uh, hind foot. Uh, there's reconstructions that we do, such as uh, realignment of the back part of the foot. Sometimes people have a misalignment issue that leads to other um, problems with the tendons and soft tissue structures of the foot. So all that tends to tie together. Uh, I've had people submit questions to me recently um, that are asking specifics about ankle replacement surgery, such as uh, what's the possibility that the implant will need to be replaced. The easy answer to that is the more wear and tear, i.e. high impact activities, uh, lead to quicker degradation of the ankle joint. Uh, the, a number that I throw around a lot with my patients is basically every pound up above uh, translates to about seven pounds of pressure through the ankle. So people who are a bit heavier tend to wear out their implant a little quicker. Running, jumping, jogging activities amplifies the pressure through uh, the joints, particularly in the ankle with the seven to one ratio. And that can lead to a quicker wear and tear of the ankle. So there's no real number, like how long does the ankle replacement last? I'd say in today's generation of ankle replacements, we're onto the fifth and sixth generation of ankle replacements now. A good outcome would be 15 years. Um, sometimes it's less. Maybe we could get longer uh, um, use out of the ankle replacement. Uh, I will tell you that ankle replacements uh, patients tend to be among the happiest patients that I tend to deal with because they're going from a profound problem that limits their activities to almost near normal function. I do tell people to curtail some of their activities. So if some of the things they like to do is go hiking in the mountains uh, with high impact running and jumping activities on uneven ground, I advise that's probably not the greatest thing to do with an ankle replacement. You might want to wear a good lace-up boot or some sort of ankle support when pushing the activity. Uh, recovery after an ankle replacement varies on, on the patient. Uh, if they have good bone stock and good soft tissues, oftentimes I'll get someone into a boot at about two weeks and gradually increase the weight-bearing activity starting at that point. Um, for ankle fusions, it's a little bit longer recovery. Unfortunately, not everybody is an ideal candidate for an ankle replacement. A lot of it depends on uh, the deformity that we're dealing with. If somebody has a profound deformity, it's really hard or impossible to get an adequate ankle replacement in. There's limited bone stock to work with. I uh, often tell people for a knee replacement, you have the entire femur and entire tibia to work with, which are relatively long bones. For ankle replacements, uh, you have the tibia to work with, but the other bone is called the talus, and that's really not that large. It's only about the size of perhaps a hen's egg. And if you work on that a couple of times, you have less and less bone to work with. So we gotta be real careful when making the decision to proceed with ankle replacement surgery, how much bone quality, how, how good is the quality of the bone and how much bone stock do we have to work with? 
So some people, they're not a candidate for the ANCO replacement for a number of reasons, and, and for those people will gravitate towards a fusion. And even with that, people tend to be surprised how much motion they still have in the foot. We're not fusing everything. They don't have a stiff, unusable foot and ankle at the end of that procedure. They still, to some degree, have side-to-side uh, -side motion and even some up and down motion to work a gas pedal. And the average patient who has an ankle fusion, if it's just the ankle we're fusing, most people don't have much of a limp that's noticeable after such a surgery. It's just a little bit longer recovery, but it's a permanent fix. Um, other issues that uh, I kind of alluded to that we do take care of include uh, sports-related injuries, uh, such as an Achilles tendon uh, tear. I have seen a fair amount of those this spring and, and into summer. It's, it's been a rash of those lately. I seem like I'm doing one or two of those a week lately. Um, pretty standard, easy repair most of the time, but there is uh, a recovery associated with it. The technology is evolving, even with uh, Achilles tendon repairs. We're, be, we're starting to utilize more minimally invasive or um, small incision type techniques to get away with repairing the Achilles tendons when we can. Uh, other tendons are the ones on the outside part of the ankle, the peroneal tendons. Uh, those tend to become an issue if somebody has frequent ankle sprains and ankle instability. Sometimes we can tighten up the ankle and repair the peroneal tendons at the same time um, and walk people through the process. Uh, so that's the ankle and rear part of the foot. Forefoot pathology might include bunions and hammer toes and arthritis of the big toe. One of the more common things that I take care of is arthritis of the big toe. Uh, among the things that we can take care of for that would include uh, spur surgery where we take down some of the spurs. Uh, one of the more common surgeries that I personally do is a fusion of the first toe. Uh, it's a permanent fix. People are surprised how functional uh, their foot is even after fusing the big toe. Uh, by the time I get them in to see me in the office, they're pretty non-functional. They have a lot of pain associated with most activities. And by the time they're done with full healing, most people are pretty darn happy with the, re with the uh, results. Um, other than that, I, I see all kinds of different pathologies. Gosh, I don't even know how many different pathologies I do see. You know, there's 26 bones in the foot and ankle, and each one of those can have their own individual little pathology. So in a given day, I might see 20 or 30 different types of pathology that walk through my office uh, rather than just dealing with only ankle arthritis or only big toe arthritis. There's a, a wide variety of patients that I see, wide variety of ages, uh, wide variety of uh, activity levels. I see people who are triathletes and I see people who are somewhat sedentary. So I see all comers that come and go through uh, our numerous offices at Iowa Ortho. So, Feel free to reach out to uh, Iowa Ortho. We're happy to see you at any of our locations. I try to spread myself out to as many locations as possible. And uh, usually the wait isn't too terribly long to get in. And we'll start with usually conservative measures. And if somebody needs something more aggressive, we can uh, usually take care of that as well. Thank you.